guy really knew his stuff about nursery rhymes. Yeah. No. Hello, 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 I'm Philip Magnus. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about Final Fantasy XV. The footage you are currently seeing has been captured with the share technique, rather the share option, on the PlayStation 4, which means that it does not look too great, I imagine. For some reason it captures the footage in 720p until I'm playing 1080. I have no idea what that's about, but it will do in a pinch. I decided to make this video because I have a few issues with Final Fantasy 15 in particular. I'm a long-time fan of the series. So keep going I started way, playing we'll when I was seven, maybe eight years old. Final Fantasy X was my first experience with the game. I loved it. I have been following the series ever since. I have played through 13 and it's, well, part of its dreadful expansions. Uh, <laughs> I get the shivers by thinking about them. I have played through 10 multiple right? times and I have also taken some time in the beautiful world of Final Fantasy XIV, which is an amazing MMORPG with issues, but I'm not going to talk about it. I'm here to talk about why I felt, personally, that Final Fantasy XV, for the first 20 hours I spent in it, did not feel like much of a Final Fantasy game at all. For one, it did not have any companions to unlock. It did not have these weird, crazy-looking companions, all with their own incredibly ridiculous quirks, with their funny hair. And yes, I realize that these four do have a lot of the hair, hair gel problems of the series, and I appreciate that. Yes, I do. But, and that's a big but, I strongly dislike the fact that there are no females to play as, or rather to have in your party. I don't have a problem with the fact that I'm only allowed to control Noctis, that's alright. I'm okay with it, but I really would have enjoyed there being a permanent face to my team, a permanent female face. Here what you are seeing currently is Titan. The reason I decided to show this exact footage is because it was at the end of chapter 4 that I, at long last, felt like I was actually in a Final Fantasy game. I mean, look at him. He's gigantic, he is absolutely removed from reality as we know it, he is very much a Final Fantasy character, a gigantic monster of uh, powers that are, quite honestly, incomprehensible to the main character. Hmm. That's what I liked. Now, this... This part of the game was very much streamlined, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the contrast between the sections that came before it, in the gigantic, beautiful open world setting of Final Fantasy XV, a setting which you travel through with your awesome regalia, and where you hunt monsters. Now, hunting monsters, a lot of fun, most of the time, a lot of fun as long as you're not fighting in the forest and the camera isn't going insane. That is a big problem of the game, the camera can be very shitty for the simple reason that there's a lot of forest, there's a lot of trees which completely ruin your ability to see what you're doing and they ruin your ability to parry, your ability to basically, well, not parry, but basically your ability to dodge enemy hits, because you simply cannot see what's happening half the time, and you spend a big portion of the game in those hunts in the woods trying, just completely failing at 
moving the right analog stick and trying to find a way to view the battle in a way that will allow you to win and not get maimed by awful cats, for example. <laughs> uh, not pleasant, let's just say. But this, this was a wonderful change of pace. A streamlined, epic looking section, very fiery, almost hellish, kind of Ifrit-ish, if you know that particular monster in previous Final Fantasy games. Ifrit is usually the name of the fire monster. This time they have gone for Titan. I do not know why, but hey, that's okay. That's alright. Um, now, I know that you can spend less time on hunts and doing secondary quests than I did. A lot less. For God's sake, as I said, I've probably spent... Um, until the point when this was recorded, I had spent 20 hours mostly doing secondary quests. At this point, as I'm speaking, I have spent more like 30 hours playing the game. And I would say that I have spent another 7-8 hours just doing hunts in secondary quests. They're fun enough, mostly because the combat system is amazingly fluid, absolutely enjoyable, and quick paced, very quick paced. I don't quite enjoy the magic system, it's more of a crafting system with, which takes up one of the four spaces you have for weapons, instead if you equip a magic slot you fire the magic, the spells each have three charges, they can be crafted with elements and items which change the aspects of the spells a lot. Ah yes, endless whining. That's a problem for a lot of people. Not for me, I didn't seem to mind it all that much, but Noctis does whine a lot for some people. I think it's reasonable, his father died and he doesn't know how to get through it. Honestly, people react differently at the concept of loss, of loved ones, close ones, and feeling betrayed by your father, not the most uh, unusual thing after he dies, that is, not the most unusual way to react to such a major thing to happen in your life. Really. All right. Yeah, that's a very good moment, I'd say. A very, very interesting moment. Uh, heart to heart with Gladius, who is, I would say, one of the best, <laughs> probably the best companion, according to lots of people. He's a gigantic beast of a man who squashes his enemies with a double, uh, sorry, with a broadsword. Oh, and of course, my reaction to this phone ringing at this exact moment is, how the hell is that a reception? I'm literally in the depths of the earth. Granted, there's a lot of problems with that phone call, but still, very, very weird. Imperials are basically um, some troopers ish. Yeah, faceless. You don't really know much about them. They constantly attack you from their spaceships. Sorry, aerial vehicles. And they're not too difficult to kill. Especially with spells, as you can so plainly see. Honestly, I have fun killing them. Later on, once I got to level 40-something, assassins started sprawling up and those are a lot more difficult to kill and they do crazy amounts of damage if you fail at dodging their deadly, absolutely deadly attacks. They're not fun. <laughs> Actually, they are. I'm lying. They're assassins and I love killing assassins. Assassinating assassins is kind of my thing. Now for the Arkham. Yakin is this amazing gigantic creature which can 
in some ways communicate with you, or rather it tries to. Um, as you see, it doesn't do too great a job of it. Yeah, keep going buddy, I'm starting to get it. More of the whining. <laughs> this one was a bit, a bit more annoying. See, this was just... Uh, Ah, good job, me. Past me, so good at this. <laughs> now, for some reason, after he failed at communicating, he decided he should have uh, stomped me to the ground. Which, honestly, I do not understand. But that's a really cool moment. Stopping a giant from stomping you with your tiny little sword. Kinda awesome, I won't lie. Oh, trust me, it's a lot more than one. Now, we've got a short uh, chase by a giant sequence here, and it was a lot of fun. I'll admit. And then it wasn't. The moment that uh, the giant hit me with his fist, and only took 102 damage, I kind of felt like, huh, weird. And then, to my disappointment, Gladio actually was late, and so I was moving in a circle to here. Yeah, very, very slow, Gladio. Not good, not good at all. Thank you. I have the best suit. The greatest suit. Digital Deluxe Edition, or just the normal Deluxe Edition, is to blame for that. I have heard that if you don't have this suit, you have something called Endurance, which apparently is super annoying and wastes a lot of your time in the game. And I feel for my friend who told me about it, who told me that the game wasted like 40 minutes of his time, and that if he had this suit, those 40 minutes could have been easily saved. Yeah, not great, wasting time. For something so stupid like endurance once you when you sprint is to my opinion absolutely an abysmal choice in game design. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This really felt epic, even though it was just a quick time event. Being squashed by a giant is very good. It's very entertaining. <laughs> and surviving that chance hits even more so, I assure you. And then trying to kill his arm. Which, let me tell you, is a bit more slow paced than I would have hoped, but he's a giant, so <laughs> he has that going for him. As you see, um, warping doesn't do that much damage to him. At this point I was still waiting for my teammates to show up, and here they are, finally. I have no idea where Gladio went to, but I'm sure he'll pop up soon enough. The music! The music is fantastic. Ah, there they are! The calories here! Now, I have no clue what those are. But they used them in the gen, so I guess that they were somehow helpful. This bit kind of reminds me of one of the bigger battles in Final Fantasy X when uh, the combined armies of Spira decided to take on Sin. It was only all in the game, maybe four, five, six hours in. Maybe it was a bit later though. I don't know, it's been a while. I, I bought Final Fantasy X on Steam, but I haven't played through it yet. Don't have the time, sadly. Great game, absolutely great game. Armiga Chain is kind of fun, I won't lie. A bit too short, if you ask me, but you still can do a lot with it. The only complaint I have is that half the time when I press L1 and 
are one at the same time, all kinds of different things happen, as you see plainly. I'm right now trying to press L1 and R1 at the same time for a large portion of time, and yet nothing much is happening. I kind of wasted this one, I'll be honest. I will be completely honest, I booked this up. It happens. Yeah, this this did not hit. Not entirely at all, I'm afraid. The warp mechanics. The warp mechanics are fantastic. There are a lot of where the enjoyment and the fluidity of combat come from. Honestly, I absolutely I absolutely love just warping around, especially when I have gigantic enemies. Or a lot of enemies, rather. When I have a lot of enemies, I can just walk from one to the next, chaining strikes, and this heightens your finesse. It uh, basically makes your damage super, super scary. Just so much fun. Such absolute fun. I was very surprised that I couldn't actually scan the Titan, but I suppose it made sense. Now, my problem with this is that once I unlock the Titan and a few of the other summons in the game, I don't, I don't really have the ability to summon them. I never quite got the idea behind my ability to summon them. I think it's after once you fight for a period of time, you basically get the ability unlocked. Or rather, just L2 pops up and tells you, you can now summon this guy. Or rather, it just shows up on your feed with press L2 to summon. Something along that line. Weird, it's absolutely inexplicable to me. Ah, Luna Freya, the love interest, rather romance interest, rather bright, rather someone I knew as a kid and am supposed to marry to preserve the peace. Only the peace is now not really happening because the Empire struck against my father, so they occupied my country and there's no peace at all. Huh, weird. Oh well. Lots of things are happening in this game. Once you get, once you hit level 40, the hunts become progressively more difficult, and basically um, you are a lot more challenged. So if you like challenge, that's probably what you want to do. This guy is a frenemy. Indeed. I guarantee your safe passage. This guy is so obviously playing both sides, but to what end, I do not yet know. Buried among the rubble, is it? Dying here is not an option. We have no choice, Noct. I know. I don't know why they're even discussing it. It's one of those weird character moments. Anyway. That's what I wanted to show, so thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe. See you next time. Bye!